the depths, the depths, dep the depths, the depths. You have to say it fast. The depths. <laughs> this was the second book I ever wrote. Um, it's uh, I call it a novel of undersea horror. Uh, but that's a recent development. I didn't really know this was a horror novel until like three months ago. I first wrote it in 2013, 2014, something like that. Almost a decade ago, but seven, eight years ago, something like that. It, it like I said, is the second book I ever wrote. Um, like I said, it's the second book I ever wrote. It came right after The Golden Crystal, which is now called The Atlantis Stone. Um, and it is not a sequel at any any in any way um no character similarity no characters are the same or anything like that I, I read somewhere while i was learning how to write um i'm still learning how to write but i read a bunch of books on how to write when i got stuck in the muddy middle of the golden crystal um, and i read in one of these books that um you're not supposed to as an author um write a sequel or write a follow-up to a book until you have written three books it's one of those rules, right? It's meant to be broken. But I, you know, being the naive young writer that I was at the time, I thought, well, I better follow all the rules. I better do everything the right way. Um, it turns out I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did not try to write a sequel to The Golden Crystal right away. Um, the Depths was, and I'll get into what what, it, what it's about and all that stuff in a minute, but um, The Depths became a different sort of challenge for me. Um, and so I needed to focus on that challenge um, to be more specific, The Golden Crystal was special because that was the first book I ever wrote. So the challenge was finish a damn book, right? Write 100,000 words on one subject or one story. Um, the depth then became, well, okay, I know I can write a book. I know I can finish a book. Um, I'm assuming I can do that again. The new challenge is write a protagonist who's female. The main character needs to be female. This was just something I made up. Now, I'm obviously a male, um, and I've never been a female, so I didn't really know how to write a female. I'd never even been married to a female for very long at the time. Um, so I didn't really know much about the female psyche or trying to write from the perspective of a woman um, who also, in this book, has a son, has a has a kid. At the time, I didn't have a kid. We There were no kids on the horizon for us. You know, we would just... just uh, recently gotten married and so the challenge for the depths was can i write a story with a female mother with a female mother as the main protagonist it turns out i could not do that at the time um if you've read the depths you know that there's this kind of awkward shift um beginning uh in the middle of the book where uh, Jen, I think I kept her name as Jen, I'll get to that, um, is the main character at the beginning. And then right about the middle midpoint, um, her husband, and that she's on the rocks with, um, becomes sort of the main character. And then the rest of the book, he's the main character. It's really weird. I don't recommend it if you're a writer. It's kind of stupid. Um, but that's what happened. And the reason for that was um, I just wasn't good enough as a writer. I, I started the book with this cool idea. This concept, I should say, it was just a, a piece of an idea. And the idea was, what if there was this weird, like, bubble underwater? So then I started thinking, well, what's inside the bubble? I mean, let's make it huge. Let's make it gigantic. Well, then if it's big, it has to be really deep. So let's put it at the bottom of the Marianas Trench, or I, I think the Puerto Rican Trench, actually, um, in the Atlantic Ocean. And let's stick at the bottom of the of the, of the ocean, and it'll have geothermal um, heating, um, and that'll be the energy, the power source. It'll do desalination, desalination um, through all kinds of cool science that I looked up, and it'll have, um, you know, vitamin D producing something or other. You know, I got into some of the science about it, uh, but it became this cool concept for a story. Um, the big question mark was, what are they doing inside this research station? Um, and so as I started researching and kind of making this um, this bubble underwater make more sense scientifically. I'm not a scientist, but I do get to make things up as a fiction writer, so, you know, whatever. Um, as I started doing this, I thought to myself, well, it'd be really cool if there was this research station hidden under, you know, five miles of ocean or something ridiculous, um, and then we lost it, like we as in the United States. We just totally forgot it was there, or, you know, we just, yeah, where to go? And so that's sort of the, the, the setup for this book. That's sort of the premise. And I, I'm obviously giving away some spoilers here. Um, I will pause it, or you can, if you want to read it, 
pause this, go read the book, and then come back. How about that? Um, the idea behind it became, you know, the United States was researching something, dun, 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 and uh, we don't know what it was until the end of the book or the middle of the book, And uh, but there's this research station underwater, and the bad guys grab Jin's son, and they take him to this research station. So she has to go down with this military team to try to find her son and figure out what they're doing. And figure out what they're doing. Um, that's where things got a little dicey. I wasn't quite sure where to go with it. I had this cool idea. I had this cool premise, or I thought that was cool. Um, and I kind of knew that there were going to be some twists and horrifying things that happened, but I didn't quite know what. And so in writing this thing, I sort of discovered my way through it. Um, it ended up being a decent story, I think. It ended up being a lot of fun to write. Um, but I realized that my challenge of writing a female protagonist who's also a mother didn't quite work. Either I didn't know enough about that or couldn't put myself into her mind, um, or I just got more interested in what the, the male protagonist was doing. I sort of shifted gears and he became the main guy, in a sense. I mean, I still have um, Jin's point of view scenes. You know, I write this third person point of view that's like one narrator per chapter, but it's a different character every time. Um, I just sort of shifted, uh, and the red, the latter half of the book is more, I think his name is Mark now, I can't even, I changed all the word, let me tell you what I did. The reason I keep um, forgetting the names of these characters is that I had a friend of mine edit this book, uh, Michelle's her name, and she did a phenomenal job, she did a great job, but she came to me at the end of, um, or toward the beginning, I guess, of, of editing The depth, and she said, hey Nick, um, I'm really annoyed that you keep naming all your characters J names, like, they all start with J. Um, I'm not even kidding. I had a Jeff, I had a Joshua, I had a Jen. I think Joshua was Jen's husband, so Jen Adams and Joshua Adams or something like that. I had a Jake. I think her son's name was Joshua or Jake. I don't even know. Um, there were at least eight names that were all J's. And so she made me change all of them. So right at the end, before publication, I just found and replaced all the J names for certain characters. So uh, Joshua became Mark or Jake became Mark, something like that. And we went on, and it was great. So to this day, I don't really remember which character ended up with what name. But um, you might, as the reader, um, know who I'm talking about when I'm talking about these people. Anyway, uh, fast forward to publication. I uh, came out with a book and uh, wasn't quite surprised by this, but it didn't sell well. Um, at the time, remember, I only had one book out. The Golden Crystal was the only thing I had sold. And by sold, I mean put it up on Kindle Unlimited, uh, so that's exclusive with Amazon, uh, and just sort of let it ride and see what happens. I wrote that book for my dad. You can read more about it by clicking the link up here. Um, but this story is about the depth. And so this being my second book didn't do anything. It just sort of languished in misery and just sat there. And I went on about my life doing other things. But like I mentioned in my Golden Crystal video, um, as I wrote the depths, I had all sorts of other ideas for books that I wanted to write. They went into my Evernote swipe file. Uh, they went into just this folder that was collecting cool articles, cool research. Um, and this was the point in my author career where I realized I'm probably going to keep writing books. May not ever make any money doing it, but I keep having these ideas. I keep you know, reading other fiction um, and being inspired by them and wanting to write stories that are sort of like that. Um, and so I took everything that I had in my Evernote uh, folder, my swipe file, um, I kept it there, but um, I, I said I need a better way to kind of look at all this stuff. And i am always always been kind of a visual, creative uh, person. And so I thought I need to get all this stuff out of my computer, out of my head, and in a physical format. So I took um, a folder. I think it was, a, it was this green folder. I don't know where. It's, I'm sure it's been lost in the moves since then. But I remember we were in our apartment in Colorado Springs. My wife and I had just moved there. And I... Um, at the time, was subscribed to Popular Science Magazine, the, the physical magazine that would actually come in the mail. Um, I still love this magazine. And um, I would take and open Popular Science Magazine, and if there was an article or, you know, a one-page that was sort of, you know, an infographic sort of thing about some prototypical technology or something that was just really cool, I would rip it out, and I would put it in this green folder. And this green folder was, like, you know, super thick. It, it just got weighted down with all these articles over time. And I would print things out that I found. I took a lot of the articles in that Evernote folder I mentioned, and I would print those out, uh, full color, of course, the expensive kind, and uh, I put them in this green folder, and that became my swipe file, um, which I think harkens back to the advertising days. They have a swipe file of like copy and pictures and things like that. So 
I borrowed the name. It was basically just my master brain idea file folder, if you want to call it something different. Um, but that was how I wrote the next few books, including The Depths. I, I would open this folder and I would just pull out things and put them out on the floor of our apartment in Colorado Springs, the, the carpeted old 1970s carpet. Um, and I would just look at every, everything just because I'm visual. And I would say, okay, well, how does this... Uh, which, you know, maybe like, um, uh, let's say, I remember there was an article about, um, I think in Saudi Arabia or somewhere over there, they were making islands, like f fake islands, and they had, you know, fully um, self-contained something or other, whatever. And I would have this idea over here, and then I would have this idea over here, and I would say, well, this is kind of a historic idea, this is sort of a science idea, there's a technology idea. How do I mash all these things together um, and then write a story about it? And that was literally the beginning of my process. I just sort of would take these ideas and force them together in some way. And sometimes it didn't work. I would have to substitute an idea for this other idea, or I would take Aristotle and make him Plato or whatever the historic thing was. And then I would just mix them around again and spit out these book ideas. And those book ideas I put into another folder called book ideas, and I would just collect them. And then when I got to the end of one book and wanted to start another one, I would just open that folder and grab a book idea and see if it was inspiring enough, see if it was still interesting. And I would just continue writing that way. The Depths was the beginning of that process for me. It was sort of the catalyst for all of the books to come. Now, I've not used the ideas in that book um, in later books, but um, it's just the process that I gained from that uh, was something that I still use to this day. It was just kind of a cool, cool little anecdote I thought I would share um, about it. Now, uh, The Depths is selling pretty reasonably well. I, I usually um, can get a BookBub featured deal, which is um, uh, a thing us authors use uh, as often as we can. It, it tends to promote our book a lot. It's expensive, but it gets a lot of eyeballs onto our uh, book. So I'll set it for free uh, for five days or so and then run a BookBub featured deal as often as I can. And that usually keeps the depths um, plugging along with getting some reads and, and, and sales and things like that. Um, I would say it's probably normally about a $400 a month, maybe $300 a month book. So not much. It's um, by, by itself certainly not a career, but um, the idea here is to write books uh, and continue doing it and continue feeding the beast, as I like to say. Um, but the, the good news is, as you know, an author, um, I'm writing books that, you know, 10 years ago, I'm, I, I wrote books that are still selling today. They're still making some, some decent money. Um, so yeah, that's the story of The Depths. Uh, that is this week's behind the book. I hope you've enjoyed this little story, this little episode. Um, I'm going to do more of these. I've got a lot more books to talk about. Hopefully you'll be uh, subscribing and continuing with me along this little journey. Uh, I will see you next week.